Tonight, live from the heart of downtown Las Vegas, where Fremont collides with the Strip, at the world fabulous Inspire Theater, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your hosts, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Bonnie Gore, Trey Taliaferri, music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guests, Eric and Marco from Smash Bros. Las Vegas. From Variables of Light, Tom Hindenburg. And musical guest, Josh Greenway. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who just got booked for The Letterman Show, Mr. Trey Tyaferi. Lenny, how you doing? All right, all right. Good. How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. yeah, all right. Good crowd, good crowd. That's great. We need that today. We need that today. We have an excellent, excellent show for you guys today. But I wanted to take this time and talk a little bit about Dave Letterman, because he had a show, his last show, last night, as many of you know, and a lot of shows were doing a tribute, and I was thinking of doing a tribute to Dave Letterman as well. And I wanted to talk about what Dave Letterman meant to me. Mm. Uh, a guy who's trying to do some comedy, not doing too well very at the at the moment. But uh, when I was a very young, very 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 young person, I used to watch Johnny Carson with my dad. That was a that was a thing that I used to do. I was able to stay up. Was real young. I was about seven when he retired. When Carson retired and Leno took over. When Leno took over, I was too young to realize what had happened with Leno and Letterman, and I thought that Leno was the best person for the job. So I just watched Leno. I kept watching Leno. And I didn't know anything about Dave Letterman. I knew about him, but I didn't, uh, I didn't watch his show as much. And I was a huge late night talk show fan. And then uh, I went to New York when I was 18 years old. And I was able to uh, go to a showing of Dave Letterman. And um, that was one of the best experiences of my life. The first, the moment you walk into the Ed Sullivan Theater, Everyone is cheering. Everyone is excited. Everyone's pumped. And uh, the little intern said, if, if you guys aren't pumped for this show, this show will be just like Leno. And I was still <laughs> kind of like in, the, in this weird, like, oh, there was, a, there was a competition. I knew something about some kind of late night wars, but I didn't know too much about it. And I watched the show. They sit us down, kind of like how they're sitting you guys down. It's, it's not, I'm sorry, but it's not as exciting at this show as it is at the Letterman show. And then they, they showed a lot of... Um, highlights of Dave Letterman throughout the 20 years that he had been on at the time. This was about 2003 when I went. Um, <clears throat> he was on air for 23 years at that, at that junction. And then uh, every bit that he saw was this weird thing. He was, he's, on top of, he's on top of his building at Sullivan Theater at, at 53rd Street. He's throwing off watermelons. He's throwing off paint cans. He's throwing golf balls, and they're just bouncing down Broadway. And I thought, this guy, this guy speaks to me. And one of the, one of the bits they had at the show was, what was it before it was deep fried? And so they just brought out this thing, and then him and Paul just had to guess what it was before it was deep fried. And they looked at it, and they're like, I don't know. And then it turned out to be a wallet. And it was the stupidest thing, but to me, it was hilarious. And that spoke was, to you. Yeah, that, yeah it, was, it was just, he, he spoke to me, and he spoke to uh, a generation before me. You know? um, and those, those before me were influenced by Letterman. Um, well, I mean, the talk show host that we watch now, mm. Fallon. Kimmel, Conan, all those guys have been influenced by Letterman, and he has put such a mark on late night comedy. You know, and when Leno retired for the second time, um, he wasn't he, he wasn't as much as a mark as Dave Letterman was mm -hmm. for a lot of people and for uh, for myself included. And after I went to that Letterman episode, I never watched an episode of Leno again. I was a fan of Letterman, and that's all I could watch was him. And then, uh, you know, and then. There was, there was Conan afterwards, and there was that debacle with Conan, and I just couldn't believe that there was so much stuff with, with late night television, and that there was this, that Letterman was in the middle of it. And uh, um, it was, uh, it's hard that it's been 33 years, that my, my whole life, more than my whole life, he's been on, he was on television, and now he's off. And he had spoke to me, and 
what I want to do is I, I mean, with, with the career that I'm trying to focus on, what I want to do with my life going forward is maybe, you know, bring my stupid humor, my stupid comedy to those around and, uh, and speak to other people and bring that comedy that he brought to me and that joy and laughter. I want to, we want to bring that, you know, us at the show, want to bring that to you guys, like Letterman had brought it to us and how Conan brings it, brings it to us and, and Jimmy Fallon, all those people that are on right now and the, the, the laughter and enjoyment that we get from them. It's well said, well said. Right. Yeah. Right. So you, you grew up watching Letterman as well, right? Yeah, I grew up, uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember Carson and... Uh, yeah. Not that, a little bit older than me, right? I, I watched it a little. I watched a little bit, and he was great. I, I was. I was a little kid. I only remember that I just wanted to be Carson, because he'd sit there and he would just tell his jokes, everyone laugh, and he'd be the coolest guy in the room, you know. And then there was this gap tooth guy, you know, Letterman. That's not the coolest guy in the room, but he's the funniest guy for sure. I like Letterman brought uh, you know the tennis shoes to the suit, made it look cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. He was like he he wore the suit, and then he wore those shoes, and he was. <laughs> He had, a, he had a serious show with serious money on a serious network, but then did stupid things. Did stupid wanted, human tricks, wanted, stupid yeah. uh, pet tricks, all those things. And uh, he will be missed, but he will never be forgotten. And I just wanted to say, I know he watches the show in his home in the yeah, Philippines. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to say thank you, Dave, <laughs> for everything you've done for us. Right, right, right. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I have for you guys. Uh, we have a great show for you guys tonight. Stick around, and we'll be right back. <laughs> for being here. Our next guests are two brothers with a bicycle club here in Las Vegas. They're called Smash Bros LV. They're into bikes, brews, and bros. So please welcome Eric Santos and Marco Aguila. Come on out, guys. Welcome. Woo! Careful. That is talent right there. Yes, you need a beer for that. <laughs> That is a fancy bike. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for having us. Well, thank you for having, uh, coming onto the podcast, mm -hmm. <laughs> having me interview you. <laughs> um, we met you at First Friday about a month ago, and we had our booth set up, and you guys were rolling deep, <laughs> and we were like, who's that? What's that biker gang? <laughs> so we approached you and wanted to know what was going on. Um, you guys have a club here that's... Uh, you know, it evolves around cycling, yes. essentially. Will you tell us a little bit more about that? How did you get this started? Um, well, I mean, we started for many reasons. I mean, obviously, it was just him and I when we started. But um, as it evolved, it turned into trying to build a bicycle community. So now we're just trying to get everybody to come out that has a bike. It doesn't matter what you have. It's a BMX, a unicycle, beach cruiser, Unicycles. whatever. <laughs> I haven't seen one yet. But Unicyclers, <laughs> unite, get on board here. <laughs> but um, it's just we always, when we started riding, people would kind of give us the cold shoulder because we had like a Walmart bike and oh, no one wanted so, to ride with us. So there's bike snobs out there. Yeah. So, oh, hoity toities. <laughs> Those are the worst. So that's how all this started, just trying to meet people, trying to get right. people to ride. And it is what it is now. Biggest group has so far to date has been. 90 people that showed up to ride. Wow. So um, it's pretty, it's a good feeling. It's, it's awesome just to see how everybody can come out and just have a good time, good vibes, positive rides. So. Right. And it's athletic, and you guys do it to stay in shape, but you also have fun. You, you guys bar hop, correct? Yes, we do. <laughs> I think that's fun. So when you guys ride and you're bar hopping, per se, um, do you go out to the Red Rock area? Do you guys bar hop around town? Is it, you know, is it a race to the next bar? Because that I might be able to compete in. Oh, really? Oh. I mean, I think I would win that. <laughs> Just dangle a beer in front of me. <laughs> um, no, we haven't gone that far. Um, if we do, you know, we try to stay vertical, so we stay as close as we can to the bars. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but um, we do go long distance. We've gone out to Red Rock. Um, out to Green Valley Ranch, just you know, different areas. We try to keep it different, and you know, if you keep the same route, it just kind of. And do you guys boring. ever get competitive with one another? Or just uh, kind yeah, of friendly, I mean, no, friendly yeah. competition? <laughs> it keeps us going. Uh, as far as like, you know, we do bar hop, we do have a good time. But then again, we, you know, we like to ride. So. And this, this is a very fancy bike. Yeah. I mean, what if somebody doesn't know how to ride a bike and they want to come out? 
Um, I mean, those tires we'll, are really skinny. <laughs> we'll try to show them, but if they come out, I mean, I'm sure they know how to ride. But I mean, maybe we should think of doing some lessons, I guess. <laughs> or training wheels. Or Good training old fashioned wheels, yeah. training wheels. And this paint job on this bike, that's like murdered out. Is that what that's called? Yeah. I think we have somebody on the show. Lenny, don't you have a bike that's murdered out? Uh, I do, I do, I do, yeah. See? I try to get Lenny to come Lenny, out. Lenny, you gotta ride with them. Yeah. I would love to, I'd love to. Mondays, right? Yeah. You would probably kick your ass. <laughs> you have a leave leave no man behind uh, approach, right? So yeah, that's on Monday. Just in case uh, my training wheels are two whiskeys, I can I can keep making it. All right, I'm so in. So no prejudice. Somebody could come out in a tricycle, a unicycle, training wheels, a motorcycle. I mean, you guys are a biker gang. Do you beat people up? Mm. <laughs> is it like blood in, blood out? Okay. I'm just, I'm just want to make everything clear. So if somebody wants to join you, when and where do they find you? Um, we always actually meet up here on the corner of 6th and Fremont, right okay. next to the uh, Beat Coffee House. Right. Mondays are our community ride, so that's when anybody is welcome to join. Um, we meet up at 7, and we roll out at 7.45. We keep it within... 10 to 15 miles. Um, okay. You know, not everyone's on the same level, so. And they can find out on social media yes, where to meet up. Yes, we have uh, up. Instagram. It'll be Smash Bros LV, and same thing for Facebook, uh, Smash Bros LV. You can find us on there. And we, every time we ride, we we post something just to let people know, hey, you know, this is the time and this is where we're going. So. Cool. Well, if you find a mechanism that dangles a beer in front of me, I might just uh, <laughs> stroll with you guys, okay? Sounds good. Well, thank you all for coming thank out. You. I think it's great what you're doing for our community, and I've heard great things. We have a lot of friends that have, you know, rode with you guys, oh, really? and it was fun to watch you guys ride up as a group and at the first Friday. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Right all right. Up next, we have Dylan with the founder of Variables of Life, Tom Kennenberg. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Go ahead and sound me out and I'll lay your shit bare. Right. See how I live with every piece of you. Thank you guys for sticking through the break. I appreciate it. That was an amazing uh, segment. And our next guest is the founder of a forward-thinking media company right here in Las Vegas. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about virtual reality. And since we're a backwards-thinking media company, we thought it would be a really good fit to bring everybody into the present. So please put your hands together for Thomas Gustav Heinuber. Well, I get the I knew it. Yeah. We didn't know, yeah, it's good. We didn't know quite that that last name was going to come out, but that was, you know, it was, was like a hundred times better than I thought. That was great. <laughs> I nailed it. It was pretty decent. Yes, yeah, so it was Mr. Thomas Gustav. Okay, so anyways, uh, you have a great media company. Just give us a quick rundown. What uh, have you built in the last nine months? So nine months ago, we got out of UNLV. Uh, we're local boys, and uh, we quickly found out that Nobody wants to hire you if you're a filmmaker or have any sort of art degree. <laughs> so uh, we had to, you know, there's no film job. Art degree stuff. applause out there if you haven't had it. I heard a couple of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we kind of had to sink or swim, you know, and uh, right. luckily we swam. I mean, we did really well in the first nine months and built up an impressive client list. And now we're looking towards the future with uh, virtual reality. And Nice. Okay, yeah. well, we'll get down to a minute, but there's a lot of uh, small businesses and tech companies downtown, and getting traction from nothing in nine months is really unheard of. So what were some of the tips that maybe some of the small businesses and tech companies down here could learn For that sure. you were able to? Um, I'd say the first tip is don't use your own credit cards, because... Yeah, you use your own credit card. I did right? use my own credit card. I maxed, my uh, credit card was maxed out for six months. We just ran every business expense, and I was calling up and just being like, um, hey, what's my limit? And they'd be like, oh, it's $3,000. I'd be like, yeah, I need uh, yeah, $12,000. I mean, doing a lot of really safe things with this money. Yeah. Up that. So uh, yeah, I would say don't use <laughs> your personal credit cards for your business. I think the key to like entrepreneurship is just to have uh, your back against the wall, really, because you know most of us are very comfortable in our lives. And if you have nothing pushing you, you're not going to go for it. No, and you yeah. kind of have to be relentless and annoying and uh, you know all those things. There's many people in town who hate me because I sent them 100 of the same email you know, yeah. just every day relentlessly. Like, yeah, because I got annoying, but relentless. Just, I know you That's need video. I know you need video. Like, you know. 
over and over again. Okay, so but okay, so back against the wall, what does that mean and how did your team have their back against the wall to make this happen? Back against the wall just means there's no money. Like there's no money no. coming. It's like you don't have a choice but get up and hunt yeah. for it. Yeah. In the startup world they call it bootstrapping, right? So there's like you can be funded and you can get money from an investor, but then you have to give up part of your company. And what we did was we bootstrapped, which we used our own personal credit cards and our savings and we just made every deal we could, like, you know, we'll do this for you if you could do this for us and you know, all the all that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I want to know what the future is like. So your company deals with VR, but also other things too. Yeah. Um, so I, we're going to put on Oculus Rift here in a second, but tell me about like the business model. Like, what's your, Are you doing this B2B thing, or are you trying to sell the customers? Right now it's B2B, because okay. there is no consumer Oculus, right? Unless you're one of the forward-thinking people out there who has a developer's kit, which is what you're going to be trying <laughs> on in a minute. Mm, uh, nice. Yeah, the DK2, which is pretty cool. But it's got, you know... When it's all plugged in, it's got a lot of wires on it and stuff, and the resolution's not that good. The consumer model that's shipping this Christmas will be a lot better, right? So okay. that's... Maybe I'll get this one out. Keep yeah, talking. go ahead, what, pull it what up. What version is this that we're looking This at? is the DK2. This is their second uh, version, and this is basically a 1080p screen with magnifying think? glasses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel like Mark Zuckerberg with this thing. <laughs> not too bad. This right. is, the company that makes this is called Oculus, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook bought them for $2 billion. And they're going to, so they got a lot of money to push these out to consumers this Christmas. Okay, so show me on your body. Where do I put this thing? Head. Okay. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. Who knows what these new gadgets are? There you are, go. You know? yeah. All right. Um, so I'm going to probably drop into this thing. Do I need any warnings or anything before I go in? You know, you might get a little bit of vertigo, but I think it'd be good. <laughs> I'm going to fall over and throw up. I mean, okay. possible. All right, you guys ready? I'm leaving this world and going into the matrix. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Uh, okay, so that's a little, a little uncomfortable, but I feel like it's heavy. So talk to me about uh, what kind of business needs to be thinking about this. And what, like, what's the experience going to be like in three years when this thing's like everywhere and there's software for it? Well, they think in five years, like uh, in 2020, the market's going to be $130 billion for VR and uh, augmented reality, which is layering VR on top of the real world. OK, so uh, what, am I, what am I looking at here? Talking like, like Super Bowl party of some kind? This is, so we got you hooked up with, um, this is a virtual reality Super Bowl party, so you're in a very nice mansion at the moment, right? Always, in, yeah, never get invited to those in real life. And there's a huge, you know, 70 foot screen up there. You yeah. see that? Uh huh. Yeah. But the, dol the dolphins would never make it. <laughs> you're saying in 2018, this is going to The happen. dolphins aren't going to win that Super <laughs> okay, Bowl. All right. Not even in your fantasy land. Um, you just can't program that. So, you know, if you look around, there's obviously, you know, uh, you're in a nice house, you're watching the Super Bowl, there's a few of your buddies there from high school, this is what the future is going to look like. Like, if you had a bunch of friends that were across the country, you could get them together and you could all watch the Super Bowl together without actually spending the expense of a plane ticket. And, and how does it know what my neck's doing and stuff? Like, what's going on here? Well, I would say, uh, you know, let's, let's imagine a world where this is sponsored by uh, Hooters, right? And you got some nice, scantily clad young ladies working their way through college. Yeah, where's that at? Right next to you, serving you wings, digital wings. Uh, please. Matrix, please add them, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, well, OK, so let's take So DJ Lenny over here, he's got this great business, Downtown yeah. Soul. He's doing a lot of stuff with music, live events. What could he possibly, like, pretend he has an infinite budget and he's working on VR right now. What three years would he be making for this thing? Uh, I think, you know, something you could do is there's going to be these GoPro rigs, right, where you can take uh, 360 camera apparatus of GoPros, or hopefully there will be something for Friday and, proprietary in the next five years. And you'll be able to set this in the middle of whatever venue you know, you're know you at and okay. give the consumer at home the full experience of what it's like to be out with you at your club before they actually have to go. You, know, see, you can put this up on YouTube for free or whatever, and they'll get a taste of it before they actually go down and spend time with you and you know, get wrapped up in the whole environment. Makes sense. OK. Tease them to go to reality. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to coax people out of the house right, nowadays. Yeah. You know. yeah. I like it. It's like I can imagine everyone in their underwear. Nerves just yeah. go away. You can totally do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a bit, that's the augmented reality we need. I think that's going to be one. There's going to be a, everybody in their underwear thing. Yeah. That you can put on like before well, presentations. Extreme, well, yeah, I, I think extreme sports seems cool because I'm like way too scared to jump out of a plane or. Right. You know. There's a company right now that's putting these on like the top of Everest and the space station. They want to put one there. And, yeah, you know, cool. et cetera. Yeah, I mean, so it's going to be really cool. You'll be able to go to places you would have. What, you, what are you hoping for? I mean, like, what? I mean, if you could have the ideal content, what kind of like content do you want to create for this? Well, when this launches in um, on Christmas, we want to have narrative content ready to go, 
you know, Oculus is already making a story studio, which is like their version of Pixar. They poached a lot of good Pixar animators mm. to be over there. And we want to do a similar thing with real film live content. So we're creating a test film that's going to premiere at the Las Vegas Film Festival, which is actually here in this yeah. uh, very theater in August. Yeah, we had Milo on the podcast before. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be uh, we'll be showing stuff off at the Dome at Container Park. We're going to fill oh, that cool. thing with so virtual reality. Go in and have that yeah. Same so you'll be able to wear the the headset like you're wearing, or you'll be able to just walk around the dome yeah. if you don't want to put the headset on and get vertigo. Because you know? I'm a because I'm a programmer and I hurt like mostly in the lower back. But what do uh, what's future pain gonna look like for people who's to use this thing all day? You get um, right now there's sort of you know there's no doing? developer platforms like there's no iTunes of VR yet. So there's no, no yeah, but what kind of injuries will people who use this too much have? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, I you know if I, like you've worn this more than anyone. Most like, of the time, you you know you you're wearing it sitting down. So you'd have to I don't know if you get vertigo and you fall out of your chair. Sitting's or, a new smoking, yeah. It's more of that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, low back pain. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, you know there are going to be these treadmills that come out for gaming, so you'd be able to run and have a gun oh, and actually, you know pop people. Get a little more healthy. Yeah. So you could fall off your treadmill, I guess, would be something. Do you think you could do like a dance lesson with it? Like yeah, you yeah. get like a yeah. dance pad, like a DDR kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think see why not. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would that look like? No, and no, we had Joey doing this before. We went through several different phases. Um, all right, well, tell everybody about your company. Where can they learn more? And um, gotcha. Give it, give it to us. Uh, so, give you know, straight, we're uh, Variables of Light. Uh, we're a young startup in Las Vegas. Uh, we got put on the uh, 50 Best Startups in Las Vegas along with the Downtown Podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah, go for it. Woo! Uh, you can find... My virtual fans are flooding. <laughs> Great. You can find more about the company at variableslight.com. And uh, we got some really cool sponsorships and partnerships coming up with uh, some big advertisers in the future. And we're trying to get more Vegas companies on board, some of the casinos, and people have the money to spend on VR. People yeah, are, that first round, that B2B play. You got to find forward-thinking companies at this point. Right now, there's a lot of people who kind of don't get it. They're not really sure of the technology. But it's going to be important in the future for creating an interactive experience. Right, with, with Facebook backing it, they got the platform mm -hmm. to create the content for us. And yep, there's yeah, going to be a uh, you know just a stream of these VR videos in your Facebook feed in like you know five years. I can believe it. I mean, yeah. it used to be all photos, and now you see these like streaming videos since Vine took off, and then I guess this will be next. Huh? It's going to be weird, man. You're going to be able to click on something and just go into somebody's bedroom or whatever. Oh yeah. You know. Could be weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. 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 That'd be weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for coming and showing us how weird the future is going to be. We appreciate you. Give him a round of applause. Nice Thank time. you. Nice Thanks, guys. guys. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Greenway. You're catching the tide left. I hold the line Always the cannon Edging over every time I handed you a beautiful thing Then I broke it down You're chasing me with lies Showing off your outlines now and every night is never long enough, I know I'm holding on to everything I see And you're breaking in to the quiet again Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink And hang my coat and head up in the closet I'm taking on an imminent headache 
and I can't stop it. We're running in face down, embracing this as it found us. You won't find me at the bottom, but this is going under. And every night is never long enough, I know. I'm holding on to everything I see And you're breaking in to the quiet again Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink of this tight road I'm walking on but I am only only dimming hope and every night is never long enough I know I'm holding on to everything I see you're breaking in to the quiet again Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink Be careful now, you'll miss me if you blink Be careful now, you'll miss me All right, all right. Good job, Josh. That was great. Is that your guitar? All right, good. Tell us where we can see you. Where we can tell us about you. Where can we see you? Where can we find you? Uh, should I get this thing? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Where can we find you? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm all over the internet. Uh, Facebook.com slash Josh Greenway Music. Josh Greenway Music.com. All right, good job. All right. They're really good. I like that. Thanks. That's our show for you guys tonight. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all that stuff. Downtown Podcast. Have a good night. Love you.